the idea of raising your own pork starting to look really appetizing to you, but you're not really sure where to start? I've created a comprehensive list of tips and tricks that I think will help you get started in your journey with raising your own pork. There's lots to learn, but I think this video will help you get started. Never be afraid to send us an email or even check out our other social media accounts. If you need to reach out and ask more questions, I'm always here to help in the best way I can. Just go ahead and reach out. Let's dive in. So where do you begin? First off, I think it's important that you need to source out a good reputable breeder of wiener pigs. I'd be quite careful in considering more than just finding the cheapest source here. It may come back to bite you in the end. Pigs are social, so you'll want to probably get at least two of them. It also helps them have competition for their feed. On another note, I'd like to just say that I highly recommend getting either wieners or feeder pigs to start out with and not jumping right into getting breeding stock right off the bat. I think it's very overwhelming and there's a lot more to it than you might think. So it's best to just stick with the wieners, the feeders, raise them out to butcher weight and start with that. Usually wiener pigs are sold around six to eight weeks of age and at that age they weigh about 30 pounds on average. So they're really easily transported in just a simple wire dog crate. So no need for a stock trailer. If you get males, they should already be castrated by their original breeder. Females are called gilts. A castrated male is called a barrel. I have not noticed really any difference between butchering a barrel versus a gilt. No difference in taste, quality of meat, or in ease of processing. They're pretty much the same. There is a risk of an off flavor to your meat if you get a boar, so an uncastrated male. This is something that's called boar taint. Not everybody can taste it, but a lot of people can. And it gives your meat a really unpleasant flavor and smell. So I would make sure that you get your males castrated. And it also means that you can keep them with your gilts completely worry free. Find a breed of pig that's popular in your area. Chances are they're popular for a reason. Most likely they taste good, they do well in your climate, and they're easier to source. Any farm raised pig is going to taste a heck of a lot better than commercially raised, but honestly I'm quite partial to the heritage breed of pigs. I really like the breeds such as Herefords, Berkshires, and Hampshires. Those are my favorites out of all the heritage breeds. But figure out what people in your area like and what they have success with. You're also going to want to have a pig with a docile temperament so that they're easier to deal with. Because trust me, pigs can be frustrating enough as it is. And on another note, I find that the commercial breeds of pigs, the pink pigs, are a lot more prone to sunburn. So if you get a colored pig, which most heritage breed pigs are, you'll have a lot less issues with sunburning and this thing called dippity pig syndrome. Keep in mind that some breeds of pig are a lard pig and some breeds of pig are a bacon pig. Also, be aware that some breeds like a Mangalitsa or a Kuni Kuni pig can take a significantly longer amount of time to finish out and get to butcher weight. So if you bought uh, piglets in the spring with intentions to butcher them in the fall so that you didn't have to keep them over winter, just be aware that if you get those breeds of pigs that you're probably going to have to keep them for at least a full year before they get to butcher weight or else you're going to be butchering them at a much smaller weight. You also might not be prepared to house pigs over the winter because they do require a bit more shelter than they do in the summertime, especially if you live in a cold climate. Then you will need to figure out where they're going to be living. Pigs are very destructive, so it's much better to overbuild rather than underbuild when it comes to fencing and shelters. They have exceptionally strong necks and noses. They like to root, they like to dig, they chew on things and they like to rub on stuff with quite some force. The best types of fencing that we have used are just pallets, um, hog panels, not the cheap construction panels that you get at the hardware store, actual heavy duty hog panels, and electric netting. We've used sheep netting, you can get hog netting, and we also have used just a two or three strand electric fence. I think it's always a great idea to invest in a good fence energizer, whether it be the kind that you plug in or a solar energizer, just to have in case. And you can use it if you have a regular solid pen. 
just to enforce the pen and keep them off the fence line if they are being quite destructive. If you're planning to keep your piglets in an electric fence only, keep in mind that you are going to need to train your pigs on the fence first before putting them in it. Pigs, when they hit a hot wire, if they're not trained to it, they will go through the wire or jump over it because that is their natural reaction. You have to train them to the fence first so that when they hit the hot wire, they back away from it. So keep in mind that they need to be trained before you put them in only electric fence wire. I do have another video on our channel about how to train your piglets to an electric fence if you want to go check that out. Pigs do well in a very basic shelter as long as they have access to shade. Just keep in mind that you must make it quite robust as they will rub on it. Let's talk feed. So a big thing I want to show you guys or tell you guys is that it makes a lot more sense and is much more economical to buy the feed in bulk rather than buy it in those small 50 pound bags. A pig's gonna go through those 50 pound bags in no time flat. So if you can find a source where you can buy bulk feed instead, it's gonna be a lot cheaper for you in the long run. And you also won't be making as many trips to the feed store. You can of course also supplement with scraps, milk, hay, etc. We feed our pigs two times a day and we top dress one of those feedings a day with a pig mineral. Just a little sprinkle on their feed in the morning or the night, depending on what you want to do. And that just helps them get a more nutritionally complete diet. What you feed your pigs is what you're going to get back in meat quality. So I know you've probably heard the saying, pigs will eat anything, which they will, but that doesn't always mean that you should do that. If you're cutting costs so much to the point that you are giving them a nutritionally incomplete diet, you are going to notice that they're going to take a lot longer to finish out and they're going to start looking really poorly. Trust me, I'm all for being resourceful. After all, I am a farmer. However, I still think it's really important to put some thought and some care into your pig's diet. You are the one that's going to be eating the meat, so you want it to be a good quality. While we are on this topic, something kind of uh, relevant to this is remember that if your pigs are in a smaller pen they're gonna be more prone to getting parasites and probably will need deworming on a more consistent schedule. You can get yourself this handy little tool it's called a slap shot and you will thank me later. So what does a healthy pig actually look like? They will have a smooth shiny coat, they will not be super hairy, they will not be pot bellied or bloated looking, they'll have a curly tail, happy expression and they won't miss meals. If you find that your pigs are missing meals, something is wrong. So when do you butcher them? We like to butcher at around the 220 to 250 pound mark. You can use a string, a flexible tape measure or a hog weigh tape and then there's a special formula that you can use to actually figure out the weight and it is quite accurate. If they get any heavier than that, I find that they start converting a lot more calories into fat rather than muscle and I've found that quite a few of our customers they don't really like paying extra money for fat and there's not a whole lot of people out there that actually like to use lard there is some but it's not as common but depending on your customers preference they might like more fat so maybe they do like to make lard or maybe they like to mix the fat with their wild game to make sausage it depends what the person likes, but generally I find people don't like paying extra money for fat. Hopefully this video was able to help some of you as you embark on this new adventure. I don't claim to be an expert on this at, by any means, and I know there's more than one way to do this. But these are some of the tips and tricks that I have found work well for us and some of the methods that work well for us. And I wanted to share that with you guys. Maybe it will help someone. Again, please reach out if you have any questions. I'll be happy to help and try to answer them the best I can. This video is just a basic guideline and there's a lot more to it than just this, but I think this will help you get a very good head start. Once again, if you liked our videos, please like them. There's a little thumbs up by the video and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date on all of our newest videos when we post them. Happy pig farming.